Uh, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for taking time out from their busy schedule to be with us here today. And um, we are TechSoup, and um, you're welcome to TechSoup Connect. My name is Armstrong. I'll be your local TechSoup Connect host for today. And um, TechSoup is a, it's a nonprofit that helps other, other nonprofit um, NGOs to learn how to use um, tech effectively, basically. And we welcome everyone. Uh, we usually put community first here. We are very particular about what, what happens in our community and how we can help out in any way we can. Um, we're here to support each other, we build strong, stronger nonprofits and technology is one of the absolute tools that we use to support the community and um, NGOs around us. Uh, we invite participation everywhere from anyone and everyone has something to learn and contribute every time. And we treat each other with kindness and, and respect all the time. Uh, we also need your help. Uh, we need event producers. We need um, people from the marketing side of the, side of the event. Um, we need welcoming crews. Uh, we need people that will help us take notes. And we always have like events lined up almost every month. So if you're interested in being a part of the event, just um, reach out to me or go to our website and um, volunteer for any of these events. Um, we also have um, avenues for helping helping out with uh, softwares and discounts for our softwares, our hardware, for projectors, for hotspot, and for refurbished hardware. So, if you want to have like um, an opportunity to get all this for your NGO, just reach out to me or go to our web, go on our website and register for any of this, and then somebody will absolutely reach out to you to see how they can help. And um, also, we also have this opportunity to, to help people with uh, products like Microsoft, uh, Six Code, Amazon Web Services. We have a relationship with all these people um, Adobe, DocuSign, Dell, Lenovo, Zoom, Veritas, Mobile Beacon, Dell, and, and a whole lot of, whole lot of others. So if you have, um, um, if you have a need for any of this, just log on to our system or log on to our website, try to connect with us, and then we'll have we'll give you links to this, um, these amazing services at, at real good prices. And with, with what you can see right now on the screen, um, with TechSoup, a nonprofit with at least 10 staff would save as much as $2,624. That's how much it costs to set up either of these platforms, but if you're using that, if you're using the text to connect a platform, you'll be saving, you, you'll be paying just $201. So that's a whole lot of difference if you come into our platform. Just log on to the website, um, log on to the page where you see that you can use any of the softwares. Just go in there, send us an email or send me an email personally or reach out to me personally or go into the help page send us an email and then we'll reach out to you to see how you can save from um, spending this much anytime you try to to work with us and also the same thing we talked talked about earlier if you need any tech help um if you, have, if you need questions about databases software digital engagement design and well building plus every other thing else just send us an email uh, uh, or log on to forums.techsoup.org and um, somebody will reach out to you to let you know how to take it to the next level. Um, you can join a TechSoup event and connect with people around you anywhere you are. Just log on to the, to the website and um, go into the page where you look at events and look at any of these events and try to connect and then somebody will reach out to you to see how we can help. 
And our guest today is um, Christopher Cross. Um, I've been talking to Christopher for a while now. He's, uh, he's a business management um, personnel and he has, he's an information system professional with more than 20 years experience in IT. Um, Christopher's hobbies and personal interests are eclectic and he ranges from he ranges from hobbies from photography to grief keeping to reading to cooking and music, art, philosophy, and psychology. And he's very passionate about people. And that's one of the core reasons why we brought him here. He's he's very passionate about trying to help people. He's very passionate about using the knowledge he has in IT to help other people succeed. And I think at this point, I would um, stop sharing and give Christopher the opportunity to introduce himself. And um, Christopher, you can take it up from there. Thank you. Thank you, Armstrong. And I would like to thank you and TechSoup for giving me the opportunity to visit with your community and bring this Microsoft Times awareness to the nonprofits in your space. So Armstrong, thank you again very, very much. Um, you know, I want this to be an interactive session and there's a few of us here, so it can get very, very close, very personal. And I am going to leave it to you to feel comfortable with or without your camera. But if at any point as I'm talking, you wish to dig deeper into something, you wish to go through a scenario that is of specific importance to you and your organization, just raise your hand, put it in the chat, and I'll be very happy to focus on that. I would like for each of us to walk away with something tangible, something useful that we can put into service in our organizations today. And the best way to do that is within the context of what you're gonna be doing. But as, as Armstrong mentioned, I am a business strategist. I have a lot of personal uh, hobbies and interests that are almost all centered around people, philosophy, psychology, those two are very much focused on people. And these are things that really help me connect with you. And you'll see in the background, I've actually got a image of people that are basically trying to build a bridge. And I'm standing or sitting between them because each one of us are that conduit. Each one of us are that bridge that allows others to connect to one another. And Microsoft Teams is a technology tool that can accomplish those goals, which we're talking into. And as part of this experience of technology, we also need to recognize this concept of modern workspace. And I'm gonna dig into some of these topics, some of these ideas, and combine those with an area called future of work. And you may have heard these terms. They may seem like buzzwords. They may seem like they are uh, these crazy business, business concepts or philosophies for somebody other than yourself. But these things are all about meeting people where they're at. If you're a nonprofit organization, you probably have a very specific charter, very specific goal, whether you are servicing a series of churches or you're working for people that with are coming out of the military service or veterans. Perhaps you're working with people that are coming out of the criminal justice system after incarceration or something personal to me, right? I'm a member of the LGBTQ community. Perhaps you have a charity focused on helping LGBT youth. All of these things have different people with different needs. And technology is our tool today. Certainly through this pandemic, technology is the tool. And you know, you go to a lot of presentations and you're gonna find you have a lot of PowerPoint going on. I don't use PowerPoint. I find that people get bored and very easily distracted on something else when there's just this slide after slide after slide monotony that you have to go through. So instead, today is gonna to be very interactive. So if at any point you feel like you would like to have something relevant to your business or relevant to your role or something just you know in you personally that you would like to dig into, come on camera, raise your hand, use the chat, share that with myself. I'll be monitoring for that. Armstrong's gonna help me monitor that as well so that we can make sure that we call on you if we see that hand up. So starting back with modern workspace, let's just get these buzzwords, these glossaries out of the way. And that first modern workspace concept is what is it? And the best way to look at that is think about the pandemic we were shoved out of our office spaces and into home. 
And when we did that, we quickly had to figure out how do we connect back with every other person that we're working with? How do we share our data? How do we work with the information? How do we find the information to connect with our customers? How do we contact those customers when they're working from home? That's where the modern workspace really showed the value and the worth that it has when the pandemic hit. So those tools all come in a variety of terms. Forms. Today, we're going to be focusing on Microsoft Teams specifically. And there are three areas that I'm going to cover. The first, Microsoft Teams as a centralized information and collaboration hub. The second is connecting team members securely and efficiently for productivity. And then the third area is going to be creating inclusive spaces and events that enable more people to participate. So we will take each of these three one at a time. I'm going to start with centralized information and collaboration hub. And again, the important piece here is collaboration. That's the key to success through the pandemic, no matter what industry we've been in. And collaboration is something that most of us understand more of a subconscious or an unconscious level. We just go through it. But when we start thinking consciously about what is collaboration, we start realizing there's more to it than just sitting across the table from another person and working out a solution. The... The bigger approach to collaboration is how do we bring each person's ideas together in a way that we can effectively bring new innovative solutions to board. So with the pandemic, we can focus on the vaccine as one of those areas for collaboration. We have scientists that are all in a lab because they have to be there. They're violating the social distancing best practices. Um, in one regard by being in this one small area, but it's necessary for the effectiveness. On the other hand, those people that are not in the lab are doing research and they were potentially sitting at home with kids in the background, possibly a spouse who's doing their job as well, and pets, maybe some elderly family members that they're having to take care of. Those people are having to interact with the people in the lab doing all the chemical work, all the, the actual practical, tangible touches. How do you collaborate when you've got such distance and such barriers preventing you from sitting across the table from one another? Tools like Zoom, which we're using today for this, for this meeting, or things like Microsoft Teams are tools that we can do that. And let's focus on Zoom first. Zoom has been around for quite a while. People have become very comfortable with it. It has the ability to have a lot of people all at one time on um, a meeting. We could have up to 49 people on a call when we started the pandemic. Microsoft Teams, fairly new technology. It evolved from several others and they were able to have four people on the screen at one time. That was one of the biggest criticisms. Like how can you consider yourselves a modern collaboration tool if I can only see four people at a time? Microsoft heard the criticism, Microsoft adapted to that, and Microsoft has very quickly brought in a bunch of new features and capabilities to this for us. And those are the, those are the expansion of up to 49 users in a meeting, but also they took it a step further and they introduced a concept called together mode. One of the things that their research team discovered is when we're staring at a computer screen all day long with 49 little boxes, we get very fatigued, very tired, very exhausted. But when we feel like we're connected to people, when we can feel ourselves in the same space as another person, that exhaustion level goes down. And if our exhaustion is down, our alertness and our effectiveness are up. So together mode uses artificial intelligence to cut you out of your background and then place you in a shared communal environment. You may have seen commercials for this. Those environments, maybe office spaces where it looks like you're at a conference table. It could be an auditorium or a theater. They've even got some fun themed ones where you can be underwater in like a little mermaid style environment, trying to create a different perspective, a different atmosphere for you to go in. Tools like that are talking about meeting people where they're at. Zoom is a great functional tool that does a job very well. And it too has expanded, added new security capabilities because as you probably remember, there was Zoom bombing as a thing that came in during the pandemic and addressed those issues. But meeting people where they're at takes it a step further than just meeting basic pieces. It's actually recognizing who we are, what we need and adopting and addressing those things. So I'd like to pause for just a moment and see if there's any questions that anybody has. 
And if there's not any questions, then I do have a question for you, which is how many of you have used Microsoft Teams so far? Eli. Hi, uh, Eli in Vancouver. I have used Microsoft Teams a couple of times, although I do spend most of my life in the Zoom land. Okay. Um, oh, Christopher, I, I, use my, I use Microsoft um, Teams presently. Um, I, just, I just started using it, and um, I think I'll still have been using it for about, um, about one month now since I started my new job. Yeah, so it's still a new environment for me, but I'm beginning to learn how to navigate little by little. Okay. And I see Reggie in the chat has posted he uses Teams all day long, every day. And um, Eli, thank you for posting the uh, getting started uh, links. That would be fantastic. Thank you. So, you know, we each have tools that we're familiar with. And those tools oftentimes are environmental. Those tools are oftentimes what our employers provide to us. Sometimes it's just what shows up quickly off of the um, Google searches we do when we're trying to solve a problem. The, the Microsoft Teams environment meets people where they're at, like I said. But then, you know, once you've connected with those people, what do you do with them? Are you just gonna have a conversation? Well, I actually host almost every Friday a lounge specifically for the purposes of business socialization. And it's kind of a mixer type environment. We created custom backgrounds for everybody that will allow us to uh, feel like we're all in the same lounge together, like we're all in the same, um, the same after five on a Friday, going home, trying to commiserate, co-celebrate. It's, it's just a new atmosphere. So we use Teams for that tool. We also use Teams for the purposes of getting down to a contract negotiation. There have been million dollar negotiations on Teams, multi-million dollar negotiations on Teams between different organizations and different individuals. People have bought houses using Microsoft Teams or even Zoom and other tools to take virtual tours of these lofts, these apartments, these houses. And you can share files back and forth. You can have text-based conversations. So if you need to clarify these things, then we'll go through there and be able to have what we would consider omni-channel and have all this be self-contained and archived. And one of the things that I see, Eli, in the chat, you're saying you're deeply jealous of Teams permanent chat rooms and integration of folders. And you know that's right. That's the collaborative component that Teams brings into this beyond just video conferencing. The ability to share a document in real time. One person can bring it up on the screen so everybody sees it. Everybody else could actually have the same document also opened up on their computer. You'll be able to see an icon in there indicating where each person is at in the document and all of those changes synchronize in virtual real time. That's the power of a team's collaboration. All of that work you're doing together in that meeting space, along with any recording, it's all self-contained in a nice little package that when you need to, you just simply go and click. And this is one of those areas where we really want to recognize that's the difference between video conferencing and collaboration tools. So I have my teams cleaned up a little bit so I could share it more comfortably. But this is basically what you would see as the primary chat window. And you know, you're going to get some various messaging. This particular message we're seeing right now is simply because this meeting is not in my particular uh, tenant and we didn't actually have any chat conversations for there to be recorded. Another one, this one is in my tenant, but in linked with a separate tenant as well that we joined in and had a little bit of chat conversation. So there is some thread here and you'll actually be able to see where I've joined and left that chat conversation across this one hour and seven minute video uh, meeting. And then I have employees that I work with and colleagues that I work with. You can see where these people are at and do all these various things in teams. And if you're looking across all of this, one of the things again, Eli mentioned is files. If we were to share files, we've got this location right here that all of the files from this meeting are shared. 
So you're having a contract negotiation for um, for for providing uh, hospital hospital beds to local hospitals, and you've got three different vendors on a phone with you agreeing on how many you can completely get, uh, along with the the local area hospitals trying to determine needs. And the vendors are putting their commitments in here in the chat. They're putting the hospitals or inventory, what they've got, age, so we can determine the priorities. All of this is a self-contained location. Every member of the meeting can participate. And every member of the meeting can have access to these things after the meeting is over. This is the power of collaboration. This is one of those areas that Microsoft Teams makes available. So again, I want to temporarily pause because I don't want to go through too far and bring these things in. The, um, the opportunity to bring Teams meetings into that collaborative space has been one of the biggest game changers for Microsoft on this particular technology. So um, is there anybody in the audience that could, I mean, I know that Reggie, you had said that you use it in, inside every day or if there's anybody else that's used this previously or another tool such as um, the Slack or such as Google Meet, if you got experiences there that are talking about this that you like to, you know, how does that compare? I'd be happy to have a conversation with you all around those things. My company actually, oh, hello everyone. My name is Alexis and I actually work for a Cigna, the insurance company. Okay. Uh, my company for a very long time, we were using Skype for business. Okay. And then we recently migrated over to WebEx. But okay. as you're talking about all of this, I feel like we're so Asian and behind because Teams seems where it's really at. <laughs> Microsoft Teams has a lot of capabilities that WebEx has. WebEx has a few things that you know they can do very, very well. This is the important thing, Alexa, I want to draw a distinction on. Zoom does video conferencing very well. That's where they started. That's where they continue to primarily focus is just doing that niche service incredibly well. They've added a few extra things. WebEx is really very focused on um, you know, that same video conferencing component with a very specific business effect that is tied back into a lot of those Cisco things now that Cisco has purchased that. The Teams environment does a lot. It does everything that Zoom does now. It does everything that WebEx um, really does as a foundational level. It does everything that Slack or Google Meet can do on a foundational level. But what Teams does is it takes it and brings it all together for a single ubiquitous experience, for a single cohesive experience. You don't need to jump through 15 or 20 different locations to get your materials. It's all in a centralized location. And we're gonna dig into that a little bit more. Um, so with your experience, Alexis, on WebEx, have you found a particular area of collaboration that's really not there? Um, you know, we just basically migrated over to WebEx. I don't even think it's up to like a month. So yeah. for someone like me that just, I would say um, I've been using Skype business for a long time. Mm -hmm. WebEx is still very new to a lot of us. Um, I'm, I even find myself trying to explain to some of my employees that, hey, this is what you need to do. This is how you log in. So for me, I don't think I've even fully uh, grasped the whole concept of uh, WebEx yet to yeah. even be able to um, describe, but I still feel like I'm still living underneath the rock with yeah. um, <laughs> like, we're still kind of behind with this, you know, the way you're talking about uh, teams right now. Yeah. Well, what I'd like for you to do, right, as we get through more of the, the conversation today, Alexis, look at those things that you're learning today and compare them. And then I'd be happy to, you know, continue to answer any questions you have afterwards, just to, hey, where is that? Because WebEx is a good tool, don't get me wrong, but Teams can really bring it all together in a unique way. And depending on how your organization came up with their requirements, WebEx may be the right thing. There's always the need for niche services in any organization, but that doesn't necessarily negate the need for another tool like Teams. And a lot of organizations don't know if they're already using Microsoft Office, they probably also have Teams very easily available to them, either for free or at a very small extra cost. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. So 
Did anybody else have anything they wanted to ask or add on to this? I was using regular Skype uh, initially, and then after that, I switched to Skype for Business. And mm -hmm. one of the things I hated about Skype for Business was that every conversation was a new conversation and there was no history. There was no way to, to scroll back. And that's one of the things that, that uh, teams uh, brought back into the picture. Um, since I switched to Teams, um, I just love it. Uh, every feature that I used to wish that they have, they gradually brought it on. Some of them came first on the phone app and others came uh, to the desktop that I, that, that I love using. So uh, like Christopher says, as a collaborative tool, it is just uh, amazing. You can, you can chat, you can schedule quick calls, you can schedule meetings, you can, basically that's all I use now. I've, re I've retired everything else uh, that, I, that I was using uh, in the past. Thank you, Reggie. So, um, right. My name, name is George. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, everybody uh, talking about different tools all the while, but um, with Accenture, we recently uh, changed to uh, Team. Okay. Actually, we've been using Skype for business and we all know that. But there's one powerful thing that I just want everybody to understand about Team is also can serve as a SharePoint. You can mm -hmm. as well upload documents and put security around the document that whoever have access can review what, uh, 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 what they are assigned to them. So the power behind the Team, I just want everybody to understand, is more than what everybody expected when you see, when you talk about Zoom, when you talk about WebEx. So team is powerful and can also be used as a SharePoint, whereby you can upload documents and give access to those whoever can uh, review this. Because I'm presently using it. And we last week, we presently uploaded documents in there for company. I will put a uh, security behind it that whoever can access this can go. If anybody wants to know more about this, I can give details to Mr. Essien, but I just want to say that team is a powerful tool that everybody should consider. Thank you. And I appreciate that. And that's actually a good segue for me to go ahead and jump into point two, connecting team members securely and efficiently for productivity. Just as we were describing just then, the Microsoft um, SharePoint component of this. So I'm gonna share my screen again so you're able to see this with me. Is Microsoft Teams has the chat, the, which is where we're at a moment ago. Chat is incorporative of one-on-one -on -one conversations with a person or meeting conversations or group conversations. But you also have this concept of Teams themselves and teams are broken by channels. Everything you see here on my screen right now on this Teams, this all sits inside of SharePoint. Microsoft Teams is really just a facade that sits on top of SharePoint. Um, the files, the chats, the conversations, all of that's stored behind the scenes in that Microsoft cloud. This is, um, th this is allowing you to say, these are my functional work groups, marketing. This is a department in my company, for example, or a functional aspect of my company. And most companies will need to have a marketing type work group. And inside of here, general branding, for page and com advisory, these are the channels, meaning the marketing team uses these to, to focus their efforts. And I can use this to focus my content. And just as if you're in the old fashioned days of a file folder structure on your computer or a central server file system, you've got folders and files. A team is really that big department, departmental file. People might have like a work groups drive or, or a public server, a public drive on their server. You put master folders in there and you do put subfolders, you subfolders. This is no different. It just has a new look and feel to it to be collaborative and to focus around the people doing the work. So general, I've got some files in here that are security, my privacy policy, website navigation structure. And one of the things that we can do is go to any one of these 
And I can say, I want to open this in SharePoint. And that's going to take me directly to the Microsoft SharePoint item. And this is where we were just hearing from our colleague at Accenture, where there's, there's the SharePoint behind the scenes that I can put all the security and I can determine. The thing to recognize is this is not only about people inside your organization. You can share this with people outside your organization as well. And I'm now inside of that Carpathian.com advisory team. That's a channel inside of Teams. And you'll see, like I said, conversations are a part of this experience. So these things are all linked and sitting together all right here. And now you're seeing it's linking me back into another aspect of that Microsoft Cloud, in this case, um, Outlook. So you're seeing all this prompting because of a thing called zero trust. Basically, I have to prove I am every time I want to try to do something that prevents malicious actors from being able to get in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to SharePoint. And <clears throat> show you that again, we have those folders in here and those files in here. And what I can do is view all the various things that are along with this file. Because this is in SharePoint, any changes to this file has a version history, for example. If you have a change that you're like, you know, I really don't like that change. If you've got a multiple versions of this file, then you can go back and say, I wanna get the versions three changes ago. When you do that, you can grab different files and put them in a different location. You're gonna store it over where it's at. You got a different number of options there. Let me see if one of these has any version that we can look at. Here we go. So this will show you that I got three versions that I updated on 8.8 and 8.4. So my most current versions at the top. And if I wanted to go back and look at this previous version, this is where I'm telling you I can view it. I can restore it. I can even say, you know what? I don't need that version anymore at all because I know that I never want to revert back to that. So, but if I wanted to view this version, it's just going to pull it up and I can look at it without it actually having an impact on the current content. I can determine what might be different. What might be the change? So you've also got the security components that you can determine who has access to that. That's easily done through the manage access right here. So you can determine and see who has access to these things, who has an access to the link and um, revoke those accesses if you wish. This is all going to, again, allow you to align to security. And this is the beautiful thing. The company can put policies in place to prevent you from doing something they don't want. But for the most part, each user is empowered to be able to work with this content as well. So I'm gonna pause and just ask if there's any questions. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on, right? So again, I mentioned that this is a space for us to do secure, efficient productivity. And I mentioned one of the people that you can work with are external benefactors. Um, you're a nonprofit organization. You've got a large donor coming in. There's a million dollar uh, package. You want to make sure that you're giving them the really nice white glove experience. You want to make sure that everything is kept private and confidential. There's two people on your team that know about it right now because you want to make sure that it doesn't leak because they, they want to be able to make a special announcement about this happening. You can invite the appropriate team members from your donor into your organization, have that collaboration center where the files are being exchanged privately. They don't go through the regular email. They don't go through um, standard file shares that people might do with Dropbox. It's all in a self-contained location with all of the corporate or organizational security intact and allows them to also in real time see in this. That is incredibly effective for being productive on these decisions and for maintaining those privacies and those securities. Same with when we're working from home. If we need to have our employees work from home, we've got confidential information about um, cancer patients that this charity might be working with 
for uh, children that are suffering from cancer or recovering from cancer. There's a lot of privacy information there. You don't want to just have readily available. You want to have control over that. You can store this information in Microsoft Teams, i.e. SharePoint, and with all the security in place, you can manage and audit and track who is accessing it, when they're accessing it. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the zero trust model, you can have every time they access these sites and these systems, confirm and verify their identity. And that's important because you're working from home. There's eight people in the family at home, mom, dad, five kids, and then um, a neighbor's kid that comes over from time to time to help kids study and share on that computer to do their homework. You don't want to run the risk that that shared computer at home is going to put your company and your customers and your beneficiaries at risk. So this solution really offers an opportunity for us to put those in place. Again, Microsoft Zoom, it's great for being able to do this video conferencing. And there's a little bit of file transfer you can do, but there's no repository of the knowledge that's being put together, of the collaboration. So you then result in Dropbox, or maybe you use your own OneDrive system for Microsoft personally, because that's what you have, or you're using your own file system and you email the files back and forth. Teams takes everything that you think of from each one of these systems separately and combines them together in one place so that you're able to effectively do that job in one place. Then because it's in SharePoint and because it's centralized data, you can syndicate that information more freely to other locations as well. So if I need to have the information from, I'll share my screen again. So if I need to have the information from the marketing general, like a privacy policy, that's something that we're going to take and we want to amend that over to a uh, new website effort. And I'm going to have a specific marketing firm come in and do this work. This general is something that, you know what, it's easy for me to syndicate to all those various people, but I want to have a brand new environment. Creating a new team is very simple. I'm going to have a real quick, every, every person in the company can do this based upon company policies, or it can be locked down and then you have to work with a centralized team to make sure it's properly managed. But once you do this, then you can determine how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna create a private one. I'm going to call this marketing for diversity plans. You can provide a description. We have a third party partner helping with the diversity website. This is our shared collab environment. You create this team. You need to add members. So let's say that I'm going to add in um, this person because it's somebody that's going to help me with this. Then you can add them in. You can specify if they're a guest or a member based upon where they're at. Sheila's external party. If I wanted to have an, in per, an internal party, then I could have an employee that I add into this. And then I can specify this one. This particular employee has left, um, but this again is something where you're gonna be able to see you can or cannot do something quickly. If I want to try to add myself, I can't do that because I'm the one creating it, so I don't need to add myself. You're gonna be able to see all the various things that are in your company by simply typing in an A and B. If you don't know what something is, you can go look for these things. All of this is around helping you better understand and better use the information in your organization to collaborate with people inside and outside of your organization. And everything that's available to you is going to show up. So once you've decided who your members are, then you can move on to the next step, which is building this out. So again, I created a brand new team, diversity plans. I know that there's going to be some files. It's still creating this, so I gotta give a few more minutes. So while it does that, I can look and see, okay, I'm gonna need some information from 
my general marketing for the privacy policy to ensure that that's properly obliged. So I can copy this file. And it's gonna ask me, where do I wanna put this? So I'm gonna tell it I'm gonna browse my teams and channels. I'm gonna go back up to general. I wanna go into the top. I've got marketing for diversity plans, general. And I wanna add it right here. And it's gonna allow me to just easily start with where I'm at and copy it to where I want. I can also move a file if it's in the wrong place and it's need to be moved, do the same thing. I would choose move, tell it where I'm gonna to go to. If I want to grab additional assets from the branding location, I can do the same thing from there, grab all the files that I need, make a special copy of them specifically for that external party. My original files are still intact, safe and sound, but I was always able to go back and find them. And then what I will find is if I come over to general, I've now got my files here. We can work with that team to organize these files in whatever way makes most sense for them to be able to do the job that I need. All of the work that I need to do with them can be discussed in this area where I have a private conversation with just those people. And as an external party, they're able to come in and see this. And it all happens in a pretty near real time. You saw that I had to wait about two, maybe three minutes for it to fully set up that team. And then I was able to copy a file over to it. Microsoft has put a lot of thought and energy into how to handle these things. So again, I wanna pause because I'm going through a lot really fast and we're getting close to um, ready to move to the next item. So are there any questions? Yeah, I'd like to ask a question. Okay. And uh, thank you so much. All that you've explained has been very helpful and very insightful, but can, it be, can Microsoft Teams be used for personal use? Absolutely it can. Mm. You can go to uh, Microsoft Teams and get a free Teams account for just everyday social use. And Windows 11 has Microsoft Teams built directly into the start menu. So when you get a brand new Windows 11 computer, Microsoft is actually gonna help you get that set up so that you can have that one-on-one -on -one Teams experience with family and friends. Nice, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Christopher. So Sorry, so, ahead. Christopher, yes, hello, um, Christopher. It's been it's really nice listening to you talk about um, the Microsoft team. Thank you, Stella. Um, uh, the fact that um, I work in a civil space and we do a lot of um, collaborative work, it will actually come in very handy. Mm -hmm. We are used to the Zoom and the webinar and all of that. And um, my worry is, um, how do we begin to get people to, to know this, to know more about the, the Microsoft team. And so we, people can begin to you know, engage with it. Especially I am in Africa mm -hmm. and um, we know a bit of Microsoft and we use a lot of the Microsoft products, but um, this one is something really new. And I'm um, hearing from you, it's, it has a lot to offer us. But um, the awareness, the awareness about about it, will be very, very, very good for the, my people over here. So that um, it will make our, our our work very easy. Hearing you talk. Well, you know, so I would be happy to to have some conversation with you around where we can do that. I have a membership to an organization called International International Association of Microsoft Channel Partners. And I have connections with partners in Africa that I could introduce you to that would be able to help you with Microsoft Teams in your local community, in your local uh, government situations you might have to deal with as well. And I would also be very happy to have a conversation with you about anything that you would like to personally know. Um, I did post both my LinkedIn and my personal email in the chat for you to reach back out to me. Cause like I said, I can make introductions to any of you to partners in your immediate areas, your countries. And I can certainly continue the conversation with you one-on-one -on -one if you would like to have anything specific. And I mean, this is not a sales pitch. It's just, if you have some questions I'd be more than happy to schedule some time with you to discuss what you're looking for and give you some ideas on the path to go. Okay. Thank you so very much. Well, Stella, I, I can also share um, if you if you didn't get that in the chat, I can also share uh, uh, Christopher's LinkedIn and email address for you. 
because I have it. It's in the chat right now, but I can I can still share with you um, after okay. this meeting, so you can you can have um you can have like a one on one with him. All right, that'll be great. That'll be great. Uh, Thanks. All right, Chris, Christopher, I have like another question concerning Microsoft Teams. Um, I think my my question is um, about integration. Um, okay. Is it integration friendly? Like I know um, Slack and and the rest of the um, meeting software is like they, they kind of like allow some form of integration with uh, like for instance I know there's an integration with Slack and Zoom you can either decide to, to integrate Slack to integrate Zoom into your Slack in case you want to use Zoom meeting inside of Slack yeah. so does my, the Microsoft team application does it does it support like um, integrations too it does in fact Microsoft Teams has an entire storefront of third-party tools that you can easily adopt either at the personal level or at the organizational level, depending upon how the security is set up by the company. So those integrations can be with Microsoft products for like project server or with, um, with um, Dynamics 365. And a lot of nonprofits do use Microsoft Dynamics 365 because of some of the opportunities that Microsoft gives them. But there's also third party tools with uh, timesheet systems, with accounting systems, with um, other project solutions. It's got Scrum and um, Agile plugins that are available. There's, there's thousands of plugins that have already been developed. And then it's also connectable to the Power Platform for Microsoft. So the Power Platform allows an individual to build their own low code or no code application. It's basically a drag and drop interface for you to build a small little application either for a mobile or for a web app. And it can connect to an Excel file. It can connect to, to Teams. It can connect to SharePoint. Based on what you understand and how far you're in with this, that can become a component that you can incorporate into your Microsoft Teams um, interface. And again, that could be at just the one user level or it could be something that the organization could choose to push out to every employee. The other thing that's natively integrated in, and I'll go ahead and share my screen again real quick, is that you can work with a Word document directly in Microsoft Teams. You open this document up by clicking on it, and you're not leaving Teams. Microsoft brings a web version of Word into Teams in real time to open up this document and allow you to do all the same types of editing you would. There's a few features that aren't quite there, but for the most part, if you can do it in your desktop Word, you can do it in the Teams Word as well. Again, providing that integration right back in this. There's less time to load. There's no risk of the file leaving the secure environment because the tools are all right there. Um, so another thing, I remember I mentioned IMCP, we have built a customization that allows us to bring all of this content from IAMCP down into the fingertips without ever leaving my team space. This is log, this registers and recognizes who I am as Christopher Cost, and it will bring in all the content that I'm allowed access to from this for me to see this. This is an integration. And you'll see right here, it's even got things that I myself have done for the organization where I was hosting a conversation there around diversity. So there's a number of ways that we can integrate in. I mentioned that there's the apps. So just quickly showing you, again, built for your org. This is where you have custom grown. This is that IMCP piece I was talking about. Built for your org are very custom pieces. Third party apps are, things that are not built by Microsoft or part of the main store, but need to be brought in through that trusted environment. There's a special thing that you can do as a developer to have that. And then there's things that are actually published in the store, whether they're from Microsoft or a third party. And you can just go through and find something you're looking for. Wikipedia, it's a very common thing to see. We've got utilities for the forms, the Power Automate I mentioned, I mentioned earlier. Um, if you're a development or you do a lot of development, you can integrate this with Azure DevOps or Jira as well. Um, we've got these things called connectors that tie you back into certain things for specific types of data to come in. There's um, IT tools available to you. You've got news and weather pieces. So yes, 
uh, Armstrong, there is a lot of integration capability for things that people and firms have already developed, have vetted with Microsoft and gotten published in the store. There are things that are not published in the store, but that have been certified in the right way that they can be trusted as a third party application, or you can do a completely custom development that doesn't go through any of the certification process. It's just for your organization itself. Awesome. So I wanted to quickly go into the last area. Let me stop my sharing. Okay. The last area that I want to talk about today is going to be in, you know, the inclusion aspect of this. And when I talk inclusion, a lot of people immediately fall into, here it comes, here's the woke conversation. But what organizations need to realize, inclusion has very little to do with race. Inclusion has to do with simply making people feel like they belong. And inclusion can be two people that are both white, both male. One of them is incredibly introverted. One of them is extremely extroverted. I'm the extrovert, by the way. Um, and when you have an introvert, they're hesitant to raise their hand. They're hesitant to join in the conversation. They're hesitant to participate because it's just not their comfort level. These tools give you ways that you can provide your ideas and your thoughts. Again, Teams has a lot of the same capabilities that Zoom has. Video conferencing, the chat conversation. The raise your hand feature is something that Zoom, Teams, a lot of these companies put in during the pandemic because they recognize more people are in these conferences. They need to figure out how do they get these people there? How do you also avoid 25 people talking over one another in a conference? You need tools. That's inclusion. That's meeting people where they're at. It has nothing to do with race or diversity or LGBT status. It has everything to do with just making sure that every person in the room has an ability to have themselves heard if they have an idea to share. So raise your hand, chat are two biggest things that people recognize. This now also has transcription service. That's something that Microsoft Teams introduced first with artificial intelligence, but more and more of the other tools are incorporating transcription. So it's listening to everything being said and it brings it in. Other tools that are AI based, there are note taking tools. Um, one's called butterfly.io, I believe, that you basically can subscribe to that as a person. And then when you get invited to a meeting, you can invite your bot, your, your note taking bot to your meeting as well. They get brought in as just as if they were a regular person and it records the important note things. There's certain ways that they work differently from, from bot to bot. But the idea here is it takes notes. It doesn't transcribe the meeting and record it word for word. But with you and your input, it learns from you and it takes notes for you. Those are tools that meet you where they're at. Those are the types of things that Microsoft Teams has made available through more interfaces and more APIs for programmability that really sets Microsoft Teams way ahead of any of the other tools that you would ordinarily think of. Because most people are sitting here focusing on, I just need to have a chat. I just need to have a conversation. I just need a video call with somebody. But when you actually get past that moment and you start realizing I need to work to an end goal, you start realizing there's way more. Language is another area. There are Microsoft Teams meetings that allow you to turn on live captioning so that you don't just have a written transcription, you've actually got live captioning in the English language. If you're doing a live event where it's a streamed service, all of the things that the live presenters are saying can be transcribed in up to six different languages. So if you're gonna be broadcasting to an international audience, you can choose English plus five or six of the most natural languages that make sense for that particular meeting. And everything being said in the spoken language will be translated to the other language as a live caption. Those are tools that right now Microsoft Teams is really leading versus all the other tools in their space. And that is going to mean more people are going to have an opportunity to participate and engage with you. And the importance for that is whether you're a nonprofit or you're a for-profit organization, the next million dollar ID, sorry, the next million dollar idea could be coming from somebody that isn't comfortable using traditional fight to get heard, but they can put it in a chat they can raise their hand using a simple little nod in their click. And the next thing you know is your organization is being able to take an opportunity and be innovative where your competitors are not. So 
for now, I think, you know, that's where we want to leave you with it. It's a lot. So I'd like to just open it up now for just open conversation, dialogue, anything you guys like to talk about. So Christopher. Yes. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Stella. Okay, so talking about inclusion, mm -hmm. how do, talking about inclusion, how does the, your product, how does it um, cater to the needs of um, probably the blind, the deaf, the dumb? How does it cater to their needs? So Microsoft has accessibility built into every tool. And that's your traditional accessibility consideration for hearing impairment, vision impairment, and other learning capability issues. Those types of things lie, rely on the underlying accessibility built into Windows by a great amount, but Microsoft Teams tied in with that Windows or the, even the underlying capability of accessibility on an iOS device or an Android device really does tap into whatever those assistive technologies are, Microsoft Teams is going to allow, um, is gonna allow the information to interact. So if you're thinking through accessibility of, I gotta find a particular field and I gotta put something in there, transcription of voice to text is built into iOS, it's built into Teams through the iOS device and the Windows interface that you can then do the same thing. With the magnification feature in the Microsoft Windows, it works seamlessly over to Teams so that if you need to have that larger focused area, it doesn't distort, it, it just travels from application to application. That's true with all of the Microsoft Office applications as well, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, et cetera. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, um, hi, Christopher. This is yes. Armstrong. Um, I, I think my takeaway from um, my takeaway from today is um, I think my takeaway from today is the first thing that I, I can take away is um, the security um, capabilities that I've just learned about about Teams. Mm -hmm. um, also, the integration. Um, um, another takeaway from big takeaway is the inclusiveness, like for people to be able to um, interact in other forms, aside from actually talking, there are other ways that they can they can they can collaborate without having to be somebody else, quote unquote. And um, and that and that general um, platform to just collaborate in every in any form that you think is that works best for you. And I think that's my big takeaway from here. Indeed, you know, that's the, that's the important thing is we live in a world where privacy is of great concern, data protection is a great concern, and Microsoft has put that into the intentional design of everything they're doing with the teams and everything in the Office 365 stack. And you can rest assured that Microsoft is not perfect, nor is anybody else. Um, but they're very attentive. And Microsoft is actually the largest security company in the world. We just don't realize it because we don't think about it. But Microsoft has more data about security breaches and they have more information on security threats and risks than any other company in the world. They just collaborate with all the other companies and share that and make it available to them. So all of that wealth of knowledge and that collaboration they do with other security companies, they can incorporate all of that lesson learned into their tools to provide better ways of handling. Um, at this point, I think we have just about two minutes left um, okay. based on our timing. At this point, I really first and foremost want to thank um, Christopher for taking out his time from his very busy schedule to, to be with us today, to tell us, to talk to us about Microsoft Teams. Um, a couple of us here have been using the tool, but he's given us like a little bit more insight on how we can use it more. And um, Christopher, we, we thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your time, your insight and everything that you've done. Um, um, Christopher shared, he shared his link with us, um, his link to his um, um, LinkedIn page on, on the chat. You can, you can follow him on, on LinkedIn. His email is also there. If there are things you need to follow up with him, absolutely, he would respond to you as, 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 as soon as he can. I just want to take this, this opportunity to thank you, Christopher, and also everybody that's been able to make it to this event. Uh, I know a lot of us have pets, NGO projects that we're working on. 
And, and I know these insights would give us that um, platform to be able to collaborate with, with people that we want to collaborate with anywhere in the world. Uh, and um, I also know you have, you guys have like jobs that you do and you've taken time out from your busy schedule to, to be with us on here. And um, thank you so much for your time. Um, I just want to close with a little bit of insight, more insight about, uh, about, about TechSoup, but just one minute update. Um, so our next event that we have lined up, it's, um, it's called Go From Zero to Hero with Grants. Um, a lot of us will be thinking about how to use, how to make most of grants and how to get access to grants. It's one event that you should, that you should um, try to register with. And we also have another event called Digital Fundraising Events to, to implement now. And that's coming up. Um, the first one is coming up on the on the on the third of January, and the other one is coming on the seventh on the seventh of February. So if you have interest in any of these events, just log on to our website and, and register for these events. And lastly, we we need help, we need more volunteers, we, we need event producers, we need marketing people. We, we need welcoming crew, we need note takers, and uh, just log on to our, to our website and just, and just register as a volunteer, talk to me, and, uh, or talk to the contact number that you have on our website or anybody you see on our website that you can talk to and, and you can be a part of this event. I just wanna close this with, with thanking you guys for being here and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Reggie. Thanks, Armstrong. Thanks, Stella. Thanks for being around. Thank you, Reggie.